All right. Uh, I want to just finalize our section on energy. Sorry about that close up. Uh, we've talked about work. Okay, we did that with a W. Might need a different pen. Uh, work is a transfer or cause a change in energy. And E represents mechanical energy in a system. Uh, so here's the cool thing. Okay, now sometimes we can quantify work. Uh, brakes locked, coefficient of friction is calculating friction. We've got a distance, force times distance. But a lot of times, the things you're going to evaluate today, we're going to just say there are no, there's no work in or no work out. And this essentially is the conservation of energy. Okay? Uh, conservation law, conservation of energy. No energy can be created nor destroyed. So if I have energy represented in one scenario, one part of the motion, one part of the system, that energy holds consistent through the whole system. Uh, so if I look, this is my pendulum swinging back and forth. You can see it. Um, state one was right at my nose. State two is at the bottom. It was 0.8 meters. Okay. Um, and then we think about, well, what kind of energy was at state one? And we can sit there and we go, we've got potential energy and kinetic energy equals zero because it's not moving at that location. And our equation, if you have your overview sheet, is MGH, mass of the object, gravitational, uh, I guess acceleration, 9.8 or 10 meters per second squared, and our height. Now the height is a relative position, okay? Uh, if this were zero, this were uh, uh, 0.4 meters, then this would be 1.2 meters, but the distance between them would still be 0.8. And then down here at scenario two, so this is potential energy one, kinetic energy one, at state two, um, the potential energy equals zero and the kinetic energy equals one half mv squared. So like this. So the change in energy is zero. If I, again, we said if we had so many uh, joules of energy at state one, there's still that many joules at state two. No energy has been transferred in or transferred out. So I can write this, uh, let me write this and then I'll show you a shortcut. Um, that would be um, energy two minus energy one, all the mechanical energy, the kinetic and potential, kinetic and potential. Well, I don't like negatives. So I'm going to add an E1. I love how you can use algebra. The energy in state one is equal to the energy in state two. So if I have PE1 plus KE1 is going to equal, that amount of mechanical energy is going to be the same as PE2 plus uh, KE2. So there's no kinetic energy at first. There's no potential energy at second. That is MGH equals one half MV squared. Now, to me, the coolest part of this is the fact that mass is on each side. So this mass was equal to 0 0.2 kilograms. Well, if that's 0 0.2, and this is 10, and the height was 0 0.8, this is 1 half, and this is 0 0.2, and we don't know the speed at the bottom, guess what? Man. The mass cancels out. I could have canceled it out right up here. So my speed is going to be 2 times 10 times 0 0.8 equals v squared, so I take the square root of that now. 0 0.8 times 10 is 8, times 2 is 16. The square root of 16 is equal to 4 meters per second. And if you recall, I said I'm going to make a mental note of the speed. The speed, when I was standing out there, right, and I released it, that peak speed was 4 meters per second. 
which I think is really cool. Uh, it means that if I wanted to, I could find its speed at half the height, right? And so the height would be at 4, or 0.4 meters, right, mgh, and then the 1 half mv squared. I could still do this calculation, find that speed anywhere in between, but something here that would have PE3 is MGH, basically height 3, and KE3 would equal 1 half MV3. So I can find all that information, but now both are represented at that location. So it's kind of a cool effect to be able to solve. I'm going to show you one more related to roller coasters, and then that will help you work through uh, three things. There's you're going to predict the speed at the bottom of the Mamba. You're going to predict the speed um, at the bottom of the ripcord. And you're going to predict the speed at the top of a loop of the Patriot. OK? So I'll close this out and do a roller coaster example, all right?